The first thing we want you to know about working with refugees is that refugees are an inherently diverse group. This may be counterintuitive because in the media and by politicians, they're so often portrayed in a singular way, poor, vulnerable, even as a threat to the country they're coming to. But think about if a war suddenly broke out where you live, you and all your neighbors would try to flee, regardless of if they'd gone to school or not, if they spoke one or five languages, if they were in a wheelchair or not, or many other factors. At Chiron, the diversity of our students includes their educational background, their language skills, religion, reason for being a refugee, amount of trauma they've endured, integration level in their new country, their socioeconomic status, and so many more differences. So let's cover some basics. What is the definition of a refugee? The term refugee was defined under the 1951 Refugees Convention as an individual who is outside his or her country of nationality or habitual residence and who is unable or unwilling to return due to a well-founded fear of persecution based on his or her race, religion, nationality, political opinion or membership in a particular social group. So again, we can see that this group could be very, very diverse. How many refugees are there actually? At the end of 2017, according to UNACR, 68.5 million people were considered forcibly displaced. This is a larger group that includes a few subgroups, internally displaced persons, asylum seekers, and refugees. Internally displaced persons, or IDPs, have found refuge somewhere else in their country of origin. Asylum seekers and refugees have crossed an international border, and the difference between the two are that the former group have not gotten the requests for asylum officially processed yet. Of the original 68.5 million forcibly displaced number, 25.4 million, or about 37%, are refugees. Now, let's look at where refugees live. Over 80% of the world's refugees live in developing countries. The country with the most refugees in the world by sheer numbers is Turkey, which hosts 3.5 million refugees. And the country that hosts the largest number relative to their population is Lebanon, where one in every four in the country is a refugee. That's 25% of the population. Germany is indeed the country in Europe that has taken the most refugees, slightly over a million since 2015. But given the country's population is 80 million, the proportion is much lower. So, now that we know some basics about refugees, what is important to keep in mind when working with this group? Let's now go over a couple considerations when working with refugees. The first is language. Language is political, and the way we talk about groups of people can influence the way that we see them. For instance, during the 2015 so-called refugee crisis, media often used words like pouring in, influx, or flood to describe the magnitude of asylum seekers coming to Europe. As a result, people thought numbers were astronomical or unprecedented. But as we talked about earlier, Europe doesn't host that many refugees compared to other regions of the world. Similarly, David Cameron was criticized in 2015 for labeling refugees as a swarm, which makes it sound like they're insects instead of people. Dehumanizing language like that can really affect the way we perceive groups and can make it easier to treat them with indignity. A student of yours may well be a refugee, but that doesn't mean they are only a refugee. Just like if you're a teacher, it doesn't mean you're not also a parent, a partner, a member of a certain political party, or even a heavy metal enthusiast. At Chiron, we've heard many of our students tell us that they like being at Chiron because here they're considered students instead of just refugees. Whether you talk about the backgrounds and stories of refugee students in your course may likely depend on the topic of your course. For instance, one program some of our Chiron students are involved in is a virtual exchange program that specifically covers migration and refugee issues. The virtual exchange emphasizes dialogue. It's important for the whole quality of the program that the students question their assumptions and share their personal perspectives and stories. But even in this case, it's not advised to single students out for being refugees, to ask them about their journey to the country where they are now, or pry about their personal circumstances. If it would enhance your course to have students give personal stories, it's important to know that this takes time. It requires the building of trust over a certain time frame. Some resources can specifically help you gain those facilitation skills. We've added some in the resource section. In general, you should be guided by your students when it comes to the sharing of their personal stories. They get to decide when they're ready to tell you, if at all. 